One of the most classic routes is the static route. You can do just about anything with a static route. The only disadvantage of a static route is that you have to manually configure it. That's the big advantage of dynamic protocols, dynamic routing protocols. Now, in your home setup, you already have a static route. You have a static route, which is also known as the default route. That is, any packet that doesn't have a match in the routing table, send it over towards the ISP router. That is a static route that is being already configured using your router DHCP. Now, let's configure one default route using a static route. So let's create new. When we create a default route, we actually say that any destination in any IP address on any subnet that doesn't have a match, forward it towards the following gateway using that interface. Now, as you can see, we, al we also have a route attribute known as administrative distance and we have another route attribute which is priority we will look at them very soon now let's look at other scenarios uh, where we can use static route now let's assume that we have two WAN interfaces one is connected to a very good ISP um, with low latency, high bandwidth, and the other one is connected to a medium ISP with a regular performance that the office uses. Now, you can, you can use your static route to differentiate between different internet service. So if for Skype that you use, from time to time, you will need the best ISP router that has the lowest latency. You can use static route to make sure that whenever you use Microsoft Skype or Netflix or any other uh, service in FortiGate gate internet service database, which is huge, Let's use Skype again. You can make sure that whenever you um, initiate a session towards Skype, the packets will flow or will be routed towards a specific gateway through a specific interface. Now, currently I'm using only WAN1, but let's assume that um, I'm using um, LAN as my second WAN, so I can actually determine that whenever packets are destined to Microsoft Skype or whichever internet service, they will be routed using that static route. And now let's move over to the third scenario where we create a firewall address object that um, we will configure a static route that will uh, destine all packet towards that um, address object. So let's move over to policy and objects, addresses, create new, and let's uh, name our object remote land. That's a subnet that's in the 11.11.11.0/24. .11 um, now, to make it available in the static route configuration, you have to enable that button. Okay. Now, okay. Now we move on back to static route. Configure a new route named address. 
Now, once we have made it configurable in the static route, we can choose it. And now we can choose which gateway will be used. It can be that specific gateway. In our LAN, no, this one is, let's use, that's our gateway. It can be that gateway or it can be another gateway, another interface that will lead to a specific router that uh, will forward the packets. Next, we will look at routing attributes, as we said, and at the routing table. 